One very common type of stoichiometry problem is a limiting reactant problem. That's a problem where we've got multiple reactants and we're trying to figure out which one of them is going to run out first. There are a few ways we can determine limiting reactants. This video is going to look at the reactant product method. To start with, we have to recognize that limiting reactant problems are stoichiometry problems, and every stoichiometry problem can be solved using the same four-step process. First, write a balanced chemical equation. That's where we have to start with every one of these problems, so make sure you've practiced that. Next, we need to find moles of something that is in that balanced chemical equation that we've got information for. After that, we're going to use the relationships in the balanced chemical equation to convert the moles that we know to the moles that we're looking for, the moles of interest. And finally, those moles of interest can be converted out to whatever we may be looking for in the problem. Again, a limiting reactant problem is one where we've got more than one reactant, and one of them is limiting. One of them is going to run out before the other one runs out. So we have a limiting reactant and we have a excess reactant. Now, depending where you look, you'll see limiting reactant and limiting reagent used pretty much interchangeably. Uh, fortunately, they both abbreviate as LR. I will probably jump back and forth between the two. I'll try to stick with limiting reactant in everything I talk about. Okay, let's look at a problem. Here's a typical limiting reactant type of problem. 17.39 grams of sodium metal reacts with 31.84 grams of chlorine gas to form sodium chloride solid. Identify the limiting reactant and determine the theoretical yield of sodium chloride. Just looking at this problem, if we didn't know it was a limiting reactant uh, stoichiometry problem, uh, a couple things that you might want to lock in as, as ways to pick these out. Pretty much every time a problem talks about theoretical yield, we're going to have to go through some sort of a limiting reactant stoichiometry analysis. The other thing, and this is just a little warning, we can't just look at the two numbers, the two grams of reactants and make any meaningful prediction. There has to be more than just these two numbers. So I know a lot of times students are really tempted by that. Don't do it. Grams don't tell us the whole story at all. We'll get into that in the following slides. Another thing to start looking at here is when do we apply this reactant product method? This particular problem is a pretty obvious example because it's giving us information about reactants and it's asking us something about the product. So this is a perfect reactant product method limiting reactant problem. Step one, write a balanced chemical equation. So we've got sodium and chlorine. Remember, chlorine is one of those diatomics reacting to form sodium chloride. This isn't balanced right now. In order to balance this, we're going to need a couple of twos because chlorine is that diatomic gas. So there's our balanced chemical equation. Step one, complete. Step two, find moles of known. Now, in this case, we know two things because it's a limiting reactant type of problem. So we know how much sodium is there and we know how much chlorine is there. So I'm going to go ahead and just do both of them. So find no moles of known. Our known is both sodium and chlorine gas. Step three, use reaction ratios to find moles of interest. So use the ratios in the balanced chemical equation to find the moles we're interested in. Again, I'm going to look at both of these at the same time. Sodium, convert to moles, and use the relationship in the balanced chemical equation. Two moles of sodium give me two moles of sodium chloride to give me moles of sodium chloride. That's the moles of interest in this case. Same thing with chlorine. This is from the last slide, but now we've got two moles of sodium chloride being formed from one mole of chlorine gas to give us moles of sodium chloride. Again, reactant product method. We're using reactants to find products. Step four, use the moles of interest to find what you want. In this case, we wanted the theoretical yield of sodium chloride. 
I guess it didn't tell me it wanted it in grams, but let's go ahead and figure it out in grams. So again, adding just one more term to that equation that we're already working on. I've got moles of sodium chloride times the molar mass of sodium chloride. The formula mass of sodium chloride gives me grams of sodium chloride. I can do the same thing with chlorine. Again, all the way through gives me the mass of sodium chloride. And this is where sometimes we get into a little bit of trouble because I just calculated two answers. Well, I don't want two answers. I want one answer. So how do we figure out which of these answers to use or what do we, what do, we do with these two answers that we've just determined? So now we're back to what is a limiting reactant. So think about that reaction. When the limiting reactant is used up, the reaction stops. Or in this case, the limiting reactant is the one that produces less product. So I'm going to make sodium chloride. If I use all of the available sodium to make sodium chloride, I can make 44 grams. If I use all of the available chlorine to make sodium chloride, I can make 52 grams. But if I've already used all the sodium up to make 44 grams, I can't make any more than that. So this is the theoretical yield, and sodium is the limiting reactant in this problem. When do we use the reactant product method? Well, I think we saw a perfect example. When we want to find something out about the product, there are other ways to find limiting reactant, but we might as well just go ahead and find the product right away. Look at your problem types, and if they're asking for information about a product, that could include theoretical yield, that can include percent yield, that could include uh, a lot of things up just about the yield or the amount of product that we're making. Uh, this is probably a good method to use for limiting reactant problems. Okay, now that you've seen me run through an example, make sure that you go out and practice with a whole bunch of other examples. Again, it's a stoichiometry problem. Stoichiometry problems all follow the same four steps. It just takes a little bit of practice to know how to apply those four steps. Good luck.